Welcome to another episode of Catfish and Carp, and today I'm here in Cape Coral, Florida, and I am going to attempt to catch a hundred catfish from the shore. I'm here on this beautiful canal here in Cape Coral, Florida. It's uh, December over the Christmas holiday, and me and my family here have uh, rented this house. And while the boys are hanging out in the swimming pool, I'm going to go ahead and see what we can catch here in this canal. That's a swim right? That's my Japanese fishing cat. That's right. Now I got a little half ounce inline sled um, with about a number four bait holder hook. I went and bought shrimp from the butcher shop section at the grocery store and then like two minutes later I saw that they had like bait shrimp for half the price at the store as well. So live and learn. Look at that. That didn't take long. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that little catfish. A little hardhead catfish right there. The saltwater catfish, really common down here in Florida. And uh, they don't get a ton bigger than this, but you can eat them. And I actually did a catch and cook video on how to eat these things a couple years ago. I'll put a link in the description. Look at that guy. Come on, there we go. These guys are loads of fun. It's kind of like catching a bullhead, you know? So if you like catching bullheads, come down here, fish these canals with a little bit of shrimp. I have a ball. Looks like these guys are in pretty thick. Another hard head catfish right there. There we go, nice hard head catfish. And they do have a hard head. Well, I caught about a half a dozen of these little hardhead catfish, had a ball doing it, but uh, I'm tired. I had a long night last night, so I think I might uh, take a little break and uh, relax a little bit. Nathan, are you eating your bacon egg sandwich in the pool? <laughs> Dude, keep it on the plate. If you want to catch as many fish as possible in one spot, start fishing close and then work your way out. And the reason for this is that when you hook a fish, you scare all of its neighbors, right? And as you're dragging it into shore and it's swimming around, it scares the other fish. So if you start close, you catch the fish that are nearest you, and then you work your way out. If you start far out, as you're bringing those fish in to shore, you're going to scare out all the fish that are close to you and not get to catch them. Since I'm going to be fishing this spot all week, I'm going to chum it. I've got this uh, fish pellets I got at Walmart, and uh, I don't know if they're any good, but, you know, catfish aren't too picky. Oh, look at that, look at that. There we go. <laughs> look at that take. I mean, these things are so aggressive. There we go. Look at this guy. He just pooped himself. Look at that. What is that? All yellow. So I want to keep track of how many fish I catch. I've got this laundry uh, bag from Walmart, like a buck or two. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead, put him in it, close up the bag. That's important. And uh, we're going to keep him down here. There you go. Yeah, man, look at that. Look at that bend he's putting in there. Man, they look like little sharks in the water. There we go. Oh man, these guys put up such a great fight. Yeah, these catfish, they stridulate just like uh, blue catfish do, only they sound a little bit different. Stridulation's a fancy term for the little grunting noise they make. You guys both want to catch a catfish? Yeah, yeah. it goes to oldest to Lilith. Oldest to Lilith? Is that how we should do it, Nathan? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hold on. Reel them in. Reel them in, buddy. Oh, 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 I'm on it. I'm on it. Is that crazy? Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Oh, he pooped. You scared the poop out of him. Oh, oh get him, get him, Nate, get him. Trick it, trick it, trick it. Reel it, reel it. Is he on there? Is that cool, Nathan? Yeah. Good job, buddy. You can have your turn. No, no, no. 
Reel them in, buddy. Reel them in. We got number 10. It's the last one of the day. Yeah, oh, watch out, Nate. There's number 10. There's number 10. All right. We got 11 catfish here. Let's go ahead and get them back in, okay? Right, careful. They're really spiky. I just want to Slimy high five, Nate. Slimy high five. Well, we got a couple hours of fishing done here on our first day at Cape Coral, but I'm going to chum out some fish pellets. When you're chumming these pellets out, you want to sprinkle them around really good. Makes the fish go around and search for them. If you dump them all in one big pile, they'll find it and eat it too quick. All right, guys, we're going to wash up and go get some hamburgers. We'll take this out tomorrow. Well, it's another beautiful day out here on the canal, and we're going to continue our catfishing challenge. Now, I've been throwing out bags of chum about every mm, 10, 12 hours. Um, so we're going to see if that has not improved things a little bit. Oh, hey guys, I got something different. Oh, look at that. That is a pretty fish. Oh, look at that beauty. Look at the teeth on this guy. Man, he's got some seriously wicked teeth. Don't put your finger in there. Yeah, I have never caught these before. I have no idea what kind of fish this is. If you guys know what kind of fish this is, leave a comment in the comment section. I'm sure Leo Shang would know. I'll have to shoot Leo Shang a picture, get him to tell me. It's beautiful. Yes. There you go. Ooh. Look at that! Look at that! Another hardhead catfish. Man, these are some bigger ones. Now these hardhead catfish have three very sharp spines on their body. One on each pectal fin and one on the dorsal fin. And they can stab you and cut you up pretty good. Uh, last time I did a hardhead catfishing video, I stabbed myself so badly. It made a bloody mess. Um, yeah, it was pretty epic, but a lot of people tell me that they're poisonous and that if you get stabbed by them You got to like rub belly slime on the to get the poison out or pee on the wound to get the poison out I, I've never experienced anything that makes me think that these are poisonous if they are poisonous Maybe it only affects certain people or whatever, but but just be careful You see how I grab them grab them under the dorsal fin and uh, over the top of the head and uh, You'll be fine well guys, the fishing action is pretty good right now, but the boys want to go to the beach and it's Christmas Eve, so why shouldn't we? Let's go as a family to the beach and I'll pick this up when I get back. Well, it's a beautiful Christmas morning. The kids have opened their presents. We've gotten everyone breakfast and everyone's just playing to have a good time. So I'm out here in this gorgeous weather and gonna go catch some fish. Um, the chumming didn't seem to help the catfish much at all, uh, but I might have brought in those other species of fish. I ended up catching Oh, about six or eight of these uh, really cool looking little fish yesterday and uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna throw out some more the last of the chum see if uh, it continues to produce uh, different species of fish you know I don't think I'm gonna be using this uh, bag anymore to hold the hardhead catfish in their spines are barbed and they get caught in the mesh bag uh, really bad more so than the normal catfish so uh, I'm just gonna count them and uh, we'll leave it be you know, I'm learning some really great patterns with just kind of fishing the same spot day after day. I'm learning that the hardhead catfish definitely tend to be out more in the middle of the channel and on the bottom. And the other species of fish tend to be around structure, around the sides. Also noticing that the fish are much more active in the afternoon, uh, which makes sense. You know, this is cold by Florida standards. And, and it's a lot warmer in the afternoon after the sun has had a chance to warm things up. So the bite seems to turn on, on uh, by early afternoon, 1, 2 p.m. And then just 
get better and better from there. There we go. There we go. All right, guys, we're back from the beach, and me and Nate are going to try to knock out some more catfish and maybe some mangrove snappers here. You ready, Nate? Yeah! Fishing without pants on. That's that's how you live life, folks, right there. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Yeah, we don't even need the net with this yet. Oh! Go for it, buddy. Reel them in, reel them in. There you go. Yeah. Find him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go, up and over. <laughs> yeah, baby. Come on. There we go. There we go. No. Oh. You want to touch his body? Go for it. Oh. All right, there's another one. There you go. Okay, there we go. Come get him, Nate. Run, run. Get him up. Get him. There you go. There we go. Go get him again. Get him. All right, there's another one. Oh, don't sit on the rod, buddy. Don't sit on the rod. All right, there we go. Last one of the night. Nathan did a good job helping me reel them in, but it's Christmas Day, so I'm going to go in and make hamburgers for the family. And uh, my wife is out picking up her parents that are joining us. And uh, we're going to have a nice little family get together tonight. Well, good morning and welcome to another beautiful day. And I am gonna knuckle down and try to do this challenge. I need to up my game if I'm gonna to get to 100 catfish. So that's what we're gonna do. Put the nice little bend in the rock. All right, there's one. Yeah, see there, I got spined a little bit. This is not my first time being spined by a hardhead catfish. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, just wash it with some soap so it doesn't get infected and that's it. Doesn't hurt that bad. Yeah, it turns out these little suckers are called a mangrove snapper. That's a cool one right there. Look at that, that is a big old hardhead catfish. He is feisty and strong. Here's a real challenge, catching fish with a baby in your arms. Another mangrove snapper. All right, so I got my uh, Jacob live well here. Keep Jacob uh, contained and fresh. Do you like your live well, buddy? Yeah, you like your live well. Yes. Right, there we go, another mangrove snapper. Nice one. Little, nice little mangrove snapper here. He's about nine inches. He needs to be 10 to keep him. Here's a little reminder to check your hook points. I got a little bit of a snag, pulled it in, checked my hook point, and the tip is bent 90 degrees. That will not catch fish. I mean, that won't stick nothing. So every once in a while, just check your hook point, especially if you got a snag. to jump in but there is no ladder on this dock if I jump in I cannot get back it up here there is no ladder oh, oh. <laughs> oh I got that in Japan oh piece of poo it's still floating dang it why don't any of these docks have ladders there isn't a single dock on this whole side of the canal that has a ladder on it still floating I can see it oh I didn't loosen the drag enough that is the first rod I've ever lost that way that is the first rod I've ever lost
from a fish stealing it. I've had a couple close calls, but that is the first time. Oh my gosh, I can see it. It's right there. Maybe that'll lower it. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I got the boat thing down. It took forever. I can't, I can't quite see my rod anymore, but it's down there quite a ways. I'm gonna go see if I can go, go get it. Let's go meet my neighbors. Can I go peek in your backyard and see if I can? Yeah, right. Hey. Sorry about that. Oh, here. Oh, oh, dang it. Where is it? Where could it be? Oh, I might have sunk by now. Those telescopic rods, they hold, they hold air inside them. And that reel is so light. It might be down just a little bit further. Yeah, I think that's gone, man. Oh. All right, my neighbor let me use his dock here, and I'm gonna go chuck this out and see if I can snag that line. I had about 100 feet of line out when it went out, so maybe I'll get lucky and, and snag the line. Let's uh, see what we can do. I gotta put my GoPro down. Oh, I've been casting a bunch, and I can't. It's, it's gone. Uh, it's gone guys, but I gotta get back to the house make sure Jacob's okay So I'm sitting here and there is a massive school of fish under this dock But I don't have permission to be here and so I'm not going to fish. I'm gonna go back home <laughs> I will remember you Will you remember me? Hey Tommy, I need a hug Oh, my Japan rod. I'm sorry. So, hey, why is that tail? I was going to jump into the water to go get my fishing rod, and I lowered it to, so I could be able to climb out. Bad guy. The warm embrace of your bosoms is the only thing that can make me I love you. Which one of you took my fishing rod? I know you know. Uh, one thing kind of unique about hardhead catfish is they have this little gouge mark right there on the top of their head. Well, I broke another hook. This is my fourth hook today I've broken. Yeah, look at that, that's bending a big rod. Well, the fishing's picked up, but I find that I've been emotionally devastated by losing my rod, and it's helped me refocus on what's important in my life. So I'm gonna go swimming with the kids. Okay, here it comes. Well, I'm glad I took a little break and took the opportunity to mourn the loss of my fishing rod and play with my children. But I'm gonna see if we can't pick up a few more here um, and see what's see what we can find. Okay. <sighs> Look what just happened. I just broke about six inches off the tip of my $125 Nash scope. What happened is I was trying to pull some line out to work with as I tied it, and this line got caught. Okay, the drag's off, so it should have just pulled out, but because the line was wrapped around there, when I pulled it, it got stuck and it snapped the tip off. So I have now lost one imported Japanese rod and reel combo, and I've now broken my British telescopic fishing rod. Oh. So if you break that one or lose it or anything, you can't fish. Yeah, that seems pretty likely at this point. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, hey babe, where you at? On Sanibel Island. Okay, when you get back, I'm gonna need another hug. Oh no, what happened? Don't let go of the rod, it's the only one I got left. No. I'm glad you guys are hanging out with me while I fished. It's fun. It's my pleasure. Here, I'll hold your apple. Go work. 
Well, oh yeah, he got him. He got him. There we go. Well, uh, the sun set on us and we caught 12 catfish today. So that's not too bad. Interesting thing about these hardhead catfish is you can watch them. They're, they're very much on the bottom and only on the bottom during the daytime. As soon as that sun sets, though, they come up in the water column. You'll actually see them swimming around as it's twilightish, just inches below the surface. So uh, the catfish around here seem to become uh, a lot more uh, active and higher up in the water column when the, when the sun sets. So I should probably switch to a bobber or something. But it's late, and Becca's bringing home some barbecue, so I'm going to put it up, and we'll deal with this later. Well, today I was planning on doing a lot of catfishing and pushing really hard to try to get some numbers up on the board, but it's not going to happen. We're going to call it. I've lost two fishing rods, a reel, and got a sick little boy. This has not been the best fishing challenge video I've ever done. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like to see some other great videos, check out my 300-pound catfish challenge. It was an awesome, awesome fishing challenge. And I'll put a link to a couple others. So hopefully you'll enjoy those. If you want to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, we put out new videos every Saturday morning. And don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see all of our great adventures in our Florida trip, don't forget to check out my other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, where we post all of our vlogs and great adventures. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning.